Hello, I'm Andrea Turn here, and today, let's watch Death Battle. You know what? I've been known seeing Death Battle since. Ever since. Well, I first saw it. The first one I saw, I believe, was Mario vs. Sonic. But let's get to it. I have not watched this yet. I'm watching this blind. Well, <clears throat> this is Beast vs. I don't know how to pronounce the other character piece because I don't really know the have not watched the the card the the, the, the goblin cartoon. However, I have I have known a lot of X Men and Beast. I think he's gonna win. So let's watch it. And by the way, like I always do with before this, I'm gonna do something that I always do every time before the logos. So let's get watching. Let's get watching. Good. Some of the greatest heroes of all are shunned by the very people they continue to protect. Yeah. Basically the worst deal ever. I see. Like Beast, the blue genius of the X-Men. And Goliath, the gargoyle who gives new meaning to the phrase oh. tough as stone. Gal He's whiz and Gal boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death, death battle. battle. Okay. Mutation, the key to evolution. The process is slow, normally taking thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. If that means we're all eventually gonna transform into blue hairy monkey men, count me out. Feared by most normal people, mutants generally begin to show signs of their uniqueness around puberty. Not so for Hank McCoy. Yeah, the instant he popped out, it was pretty clear that something was different about him. Namely, the giant monkey hands and feet. <laughs> that I must see. have been rough on the way out. He better give dear old mom double the presents on Mother's Day. Though Hank successfully hid his mutation from the world throughout his adolescent life, he was eventually discovered and shunned. Constantly harassed and eventually kicked out of his own school, he was left to wallow in loneliness. Until good old oh, Wheels guy. showed up and offered him a place on the mutant group known as the X-Men. Oh, Hank I took spent. on the nickname that was previously used to degrade him and transformed it into something new. His code name, The Beast. Oh yeah! It just looks really cool. Let's just say that's out of sight. As an X-Man, Beast became an integral member of this uncanny team. His superhuman strength, speed, and durability let him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with baddies like the immovable Blob and Kraven the Hunter. Wow, that was cool. But Beast was a genius, like yours truly, and quickly completed his doctoral studies. Eventually leaving the X-Men, he became a leading researcher in mutant genetics. Desperate to cure the mutant phenomenon, Beast developed a serum which he theorized would temporarily counteract the mutated genes in his body. Except it kind of did the opposite. Wow. Poor guy. Now he truly was a beast. This transformation wasn't all bad, though. Fuzzy Beast could now lift over 10 tons, run over 40 miles per hour, and jump over 25 feet in the air. He also had a wicked healing factor, which made him essentially bulletproof. But this was nerfed dramatically from healing instantaneously to over a couple of hours when Quasimodo's experiments turned him blue. For a scientific genius, he never did quite figure out how to turn back to his old self. I mean, he's been able to turn into a cat man, a horse man, blue Kelsey Grammer, and even Sasquatch. Somehow, he always ends up as his classic blue ape self. Now unable to hide in plain sight, Beast had little choice but to return to the X-Men as a teacher and a leader. As my research makes evident, it is possible to enhance the intelligence of Mollusca cephalopoda, such as the squid, to the same level as that of the average human. Even a little above average. I'm afraid I must leave early, so I'll hand you over to my new teaching assistant, Mr. Cephalopod. Calm <laughs> 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 down, everyone. Now, where were we? I yes, the neurological oh. aspects of cognitive. The juggernaut is ridiculously sorry. strong. Beast isn't. Oh, 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 sorry. You know what? I'm gonna watch it. Were there any questions? What? Beast isn't just a genius, he's also a ridiculously strong fighter. He has survived hits from the Juggernaut, smashed open a tank with his bare fists, hit the ground with a punch wow. so hard he created an earth-shattering shockwave, and lifted a solid gold oak tree. 
A cubic foot of gold weighs approximately one ton. Ooh, Comparing Minecraft. the diameter of the tree to Hank's height, it's reasonable to believe that this golden tree weighs at least 60 tons. Or a shit ton, to be precise. Wow, Despite shit tons. Despite his athletic skill and enormous strength, Beast is a pacifist, preferring diplomacy over fisticuffs. He is rarely eager to enter a fight. In combat, he usually relies on his teammates to throw punches while he holds back to come up with game-winning strategies using his brilliant mind. Like the time he figured out how to use Juggernaut's own bulk against him. As Archimedes said when he discovered the principle of displacement, Eureka. But when he gets angry, he'll enter a rage which makes him so uncontrollably fierce, he's a danger even to his closest friends, literally unleashing the beast within. Beast's monstrous appearance remained a permanent part of his life. He was never truly accepted by society, and even had to leave the woman he loved for fear she would become a target of mutant haters. But if he could have his way, he would spend his days hanging from the ceiling with a nice cup of tea reading Shakespeare. But we don't always get what we want, so he'll have to settle for kicking ass. I think heart averted feet and many a tear in our opposed path to persevere. A minor poet for a minor obstacle. Just be cool. 1,000 years ago, superstition and the sword ruled. It was a time of darkness. It was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles. And badass cartoon intros. What? Stone by day, warriors by night, gargoyles used to be common throughout the world. Wow. Like the stone statues they inspired, gargoyles were known as protectors. Guarding their home and those inside was always their top priority. It's I not see. every day your garden statue is also your top build bodyguard. Otherwise, I'd have a shitload more lawn gnomes. I want to gargoyle year like that. In AD, a clan of gargoyles formed a symbiotic relationship with the humans of a Scottish castle. Using their superhuman strength, keen senses, and warrior spirit, the gargoyles defended the castle from invaders at night. In return, their human allies would watch over them during the day when they are most vulnerable, as gargoyles turn to solid stone in daylight. The gargoyles were led by Goliath, a creature with a voice so sexy it makes humans turn to stone. If you know what I'm saying. You are trespassing. What? Unfortunately, due to their beastly appearance, Goliath's clan eventually faced unjust prejudice from the very humans under their protection. We are most seriously displeased to allow beasts in the dining hall. These are unnatural creatures. No good can come from associating with them. If yes, that wasn't bad enough, Goliath was betrayed by his closest human friend, what? causing nearly his entire clan to be smashed How to bits. Could you? Then the few that did survive were magically sealed in stone forever by a misinformed wizard. Talk about a shitty Monday. Sealed in stone forever, or until one very specific, seemingly impossible criteria was met. The terms of the spell were that they would sleep until the castle rises above the clouds. And when he says above the clouds, he means it literally. So, stone they remain for a thousand years until in 1994. Some billionaire with a name that sounds like an antidepressant just happened to be crazy enough to try something. Xanatos moved every last stone of the ancient castle to the top of his New York skyscraper. Watch what happened to poke above the clouds. The cost of which must have been astronomical. Wow, that's a big disappoint me. So, in that sense, you're telling me that the gargoyles are but stone just because they have to be above the clouds? They were cool, actually. The curse was broken. Oh, no. The gargoyles awoke once again, and Goliath was tasked with leading his clan into the modern world. Despite being completely out of his element, Goliath adapted surprisingly fast. You mean he was texting and watching cat videos in no time? No, this was the 90s. Oh, so he wore crazy colored clothing and used nonsensical description words like bodacious, radical, or... Uh, jalapeno. 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 Jalapeno? Jalapeno? Huh? Jalapeno. 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 What the fuck? What the fuck was that?